cruising on down South Virginia Street into Pepper Mill for vlog 252. You know what's funny? Back when I had a $10,000 downswing in 2012, I've referenced it before, I feel like there was a large percentage of that downswing that was involved with getting money in with the best hand and simply having it not hold up. People would jam with ace jack, you'd call them with queens and you'd lose. I feel like that would happen a lot more in 2012. Well, the last couple of years, that has not happened nearly as much. What has happened, particularly in the last seven or eight months of me playing poker, has just been getting dealt the second best hand a lot. Oftentimes flopping queen high flushes and drawing dead and losing big pots as a result. That has happened to me a number of times in the last week. You saw in the last week that I was able to book a nice win on the vlog, but as we pull up Bink, every other session I played, I got brutalized in. And it was just basically a situation where I got dealt a lot of silver medals. So, and I kind of hate to admit this, after a pretty good January, I am now officially in the red for 2024. So needless to say, I've got work to do. By the way, in regards to the downswing I mentioned, I actually did something on Monday that I've never done before in my poker career. And I'll tell you what that is coming up at the end of the vlog. If playing in a bad poker game is hell, then being third on a four-person list is definitely poker's equivalent of purgatory. So with that in mind, I knew I'd have a wait on this Thursday at Pepper Mill. During that time, I would crush a garden omelet at Cafe Milano and take 10 seconds to notice that Niners Cardinals was being replayed in honor of Christian McCaffrey winning Offensive Player of the Year. And I, for one, am still bitter that he did not get the ball on either of those critical third down plays at the end of regulation and overtime in the Super Bowl. After about an hour of waiting, we'd fire up a 5-10 on table 5 just after noon, and I'd buy in for 1,000. We'd see a legend of Reno poker show up to the room, but he would walk by our game and instead play the $65 Nooner Tournament. Damn it. Anyway, we'd fire it up six-handed, and the first hand would involve me getting dealt pocket nines in the cutoff and calling a $30 raise from plus one in what ended up being a four-way pot. And with 120 in, the board would come out five-five-deuce five, rainbow, and the original raiser would make a $45 bet. I make the call with my overpair, and everyone else goes out. And with 210 in, we're heads up to a turn that comes the queen of clubs. And this time I face a $105 bet. This opponent is really the only one in the game at the moment that I don't know, but he is a younger guy that looks the part of a player capable of making some fairly aggressive plays. And I certainly haven't shown a hell of a lot of strength here myself. So once again, I call. And with 420 in, the river is a six. And now he checks. Now against some players, I'd make a thin value bet here. But not knowing this one, I decide to just check it back in kind of a nitty fashion. And sure enough, he would table King-10 offsuit, and the pot would get shipped over to me. All right, it's comp's corner. As you can see, I have a very tight window in which to check my comp balance here at Peppermill. Let's see what I got. I may be getting my ass kicked in poker the last week. But I still got $884.47 worth of comps. So I got that going. A change in what could be described as a new era of the Pepper Mill Poker Room has been the allowing of bomb pots in our game. Oddly, the Pepper Mill was one of the first places to ever feature them years ago, back when a traditional 5-10 game existed, with a host booking it. As I've mentioned, the removal of that host was the single best thing to ever happen to the game I now play in, because... We no longer have anyone asking pros to come here and giving them free rooms when they do. It was ridiculous. Anyway, bomb pots haven't been a thing in the 0510 rock game, but now they have been happening a lot. And when they occur, they're on the half hour when time is collected. Double board PLO bomb pots were experimented with at first, but due to the time suck that they tend to be, the current format is just regular hold'em at $25 per player. 
with the person holding the dedicated bomb pot button getting to pick one or two boards. In this case, there were two. So I am just going to show them on the screen with my graphics not being set up to display two boards. That's a spicy meatball, Peter. I am a guy who has not done well in bomb pots over the years, but I also haven't been dealt pocket aces until this instance in one of them. And with 225 in, and I suppose I should point out for those unfamiliar, and I'm assuming if you're watching this vlog, you're not, but bomb pots are pots in which everyone puts in money pre-flop and there is zero pre-flop action and the betting starts on the flop. And if there's two boards, obviously there can be a lot of chops. So it wasn't an ideal spot to have pocket aces given the fact I didn't get the opportunity to bet pre-flop when you know they're the best hand. But obviously I'm still gonna come out and bet this when you look at the two boards, particularly the top board from my under the gun plus one position. I make it 60. And I expected multiple callers here, but only got one coming from the player to my left, middle position one. And with 345 in, I turn the nut flush on the top board and bet 150. My opponent is far from a tight player and wouldn't be folding his hand here. And with 645 in, I'd wind up with the nuts on the top, but I wasn't sure how often I'd have him beat on the bottom board. Still, he was pretty short stacked at this point. So I put them all in for his last 250 or so. And I think there's a pretty good chance that aces were still good on the bottom as well because he does not take too long and mucks his hand. And he's the type that if he had two pair, he would be capable of folding it, but he would have given it more thought than he gave it. So on the first bomb pot shown on this vlog in Reno, I do manage to scoop it. Apparently Bugsy has run into Kayla outside of the pepper mill. So for another edition of Kayla Corner Unleashed, let's check in with Keith. Hey, we're doing a special edition of uh, Kayla's Corner tonight out here in Reno at Cypress. Uh, Kayla, what's going on out here tonight? Well, you know, every once in a while this kitty has to break out of her corner. Tell me, how do you like to break out of yours? Nobody puts my baby in a corner. We get an all-in situation that I wasn't involved in, and this is going to shock you, but Ace King went up against Pocket Jacks, and when they agreed to run it twice, it ended in a chop. Over the next two hours, I'd lose back about 150, and most of that came in bomb pots. The action was picking up, though. Unfortunately, as that occurred, I would be card dead in the process. We'd see multiple hockey pucks being bet, and the player that I've mentioned before, who I've played a ton of hands against, but have somehow never seen his face, would get a full double up when he had the nuts. I would lose about $100 in another double board bomb pot before being chastised by the mask wearing individual for not playing enough hands. So in honor of that, I would open the nine six of clubs, middle position two, and he'd call me in the low jack. High jack would see this flop as well. So with 105 in, the board would come out 10 eight five rainbow with one club, and I would make a $35 continuation bet. The mask wearing gentleman would make the call with the other guy folding. And with 175 in, the turn pairs the eight. Now this should have been a check on my part, but knowing just how many hands this player plays, there's still a good chance that he could have an extremely weak holding here and would be planning on folding if I were to make another wager. So I put $80 into the pot, and unfortunately for me, he wastes zero time making the call. So with 335 in, the river is a slightly above average card for my hand. So I make it the straight after all, but I had to realize that in a spot like this, I cannot go crazy because he could and often does slow play hands against me. So that could already be taking place here. And it's also possible that he simply filled up on the river. There are a lot of guys like this where they'll play a ton of hands pre-flop, but if you ever make a good size river bet and they still find a way to raise you, you better buckle your seatbelt because that is always going to be a nutted hand. Anyway, in this case, I just put in 150 targeting a 10. And I made the bet with the understanding that if he were to raise big, I was probably going to have to fold my straight in this spot. Because the best case scenario would be a chop, I think, if that were to happen. But fortunately, it doesn't, as he just calls, creating a $635 pot, and I would win 
against his 8-6. So the slow play burns him on what would be one of the final hands I would play. I'd probably get in about another hour of play after that in which my being card dead would continue over that time and I'd lose back a little of my profit on the day but it was still a winning day nonetheless. Wrapping up the session here on this Thursday afternoon. I have an appointment with a nurse. That's why I have to leave. The appointment is not at a hospital though. Interesting. Anyway, booking a win of $720. Can't complain. Uh, not all that proud of the way I was able to win that last hand, but uh, try to turn this year around. It's a year that's gone well for me on days in which I have vlogged. Not so well for me on a lot of the days I haven't. I know the solution is then pointed out to, well, why don't you just vlog every single day? I wish that were possible, I do. But unfortunately, that is simply not the case. I simply have to play better on days I'm not vlogging and try to have the second best hand a slightly lower percentage of the time if possible. All right, so I don't know if any of you have ever done this, but the success that I've had over the last couple of vlogs, unfortunately, hasn't manifested itself in the other sessions as well. Got my ass kicked in a number of them, making a lot of silver medals, as they say, a couple of which were situations where I probably should have gotten away from said hands but was unable to do so. But after those couple of days of poker, and me realizing that I was now in the red on the year, albeit barely. I actually drove over to the pep mill. It was on Monday, and usually I have my son Austin, my four-year-old, with me on those nights, but in this case, he was staying with his grandparents, so I'm just thinking to myself, well, I got the night to myself. Let's go try to uh, chip away and kind of get back into the game after these several brutal sessions. But truth is, I just was not in the right mindset. I literally drove to the pepper mill, did not even go in and look at who was in the game. I got to the outside of the building and said, you know what? I can't do it. Can't do it. So I just drove home. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. I've definitely gone to the casino, looked at the games, and went home. But I don't think I've ever driven to the casino just to talk myself into the fact that Mentally, I am not in the right place right now to play poker and just driven home. Uh, I'm sure some of you have stories along those same lines. If you want to leave them in the comments below, uh, that might be fun for people to read. So I am heading to Los Angeles. My plan is to go to the Hustler Casino. It's the only one of those casinos in LA that I haven't played at. I've been at Commerce Bike uh, Gardens, but never to the Hustler. So I want to shoot a vlog there for the next vlog um and then i am leaving the country they're gonna have to wait a couple of weeks to find out where i'm going or follow me on instagram at ben Deach. that would be one way to get a sneak peek of what that trip is going to entail definitely a first for me when it comes to trips like this that's for sure if you're new to the channel, hit those like and subscribe buttons. I genuinely appreciate that. And see you next time. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best above all the rest. Put me to the test. Uh, expect nothing less. You check as I'm chess. What's happening next? Yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon. No coming in second. This life is a lesson. He got a new engine from pain. It's a blessing. New focus, no guessing. Just bold an obsession. All in his possession. You got the retention. I leave an impression and take a redemption. Just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11. It's time for progression. Uh. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. The other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. People like sheep.